Hello, yo. So as last time we said we would not be waiting for anyone um, because we want to establish that things start on time. We will actually start on time. Let me just, oh, I can't adhere the channel. <sighs> hey, Steve. Yes. So, Let's start. I have to admit, this is the first time I'm actually coming in somewhat blank because I have meetings back to back 24 7. <laughs> Toxic updates. Um, we literally dropped off the, um, off the call between um, Hinat, between um, TOC and SIG. Um, they, um, the vote for for tech lead will uh, start officially today. Apparently I had some, some formal mistake or whatever. I don't know. I thought we, we started this formally like two months ago, but whatever. Um, we will uh, be having a formal vote on, on tech lead uh, starting today. Amy volunteered to, to fix whatever I did wrong, which was super nice of her. And I'm really happy to have her for all the formal stuff. Um, the other update is uh, the due diligence of, um, uh, uh, sorry, no, there's one more. Um, the TOC voiced concerns about the diversity level of, of the chairs. So they actually asked us to, to look for, for different nominations, which uh, obviously um, is bad for Steve, uh, who's also here. Um, we reached out for both TOC and also behind the scenes, but um, anyone who wants to who wants to nominate someone or nominate themselves, uh, speak up now or send email or poke us on Slack or whatever. Um, we are there, we are listening, um, so please, please poke us. Um, now we're coming to due diligence updates um, for Cortex. There are some open questions which are currently being addressed. For Thanos, um, all open questions have been addressed. So um, Thanos is um, moving to a public comment phase. Um, that thread is already on the TOC list. Um, everyone here is encouraged to, to um, also voice support if they want to voice support. Um, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's ongoing, it's good. Um, and feedback from, from TOC is basically that, that due diligence is good. Um, they actually called out the Thanos stock, but uh, just for anyone on this call, the cortex of the Thanos stocks are actually pretty much the same from the structure as an example of how to do a due diligence well, which is super nice. And I think Bartek deserves a shout out for, for driving the main uh, brunt of, of that work. So yeah. That's it. And else uh, I informed TOC that we are doing uh, the BCP doc and that we are doing the um, use cases for data analysis and we'll start working on this. Okay. Nice. I think one more thing I got from, from the call we had literally one hour ago was that um, 
CNCF is, is really encouraging six to uh, use the CNCF block space. So we are welcome to, to produce any content we want uh, relevant to our, our topic. And this will be published in the CNCF block, as a CNCF blog post. So uh, I think recently um, seek storage or, or something like that um, exposed something on, on their white paper. So we are encouraged on that to doing that as well. What do folks think as an idea for a white, <clears throat> as an idea for a white paper or rather a blog uh, to identify opportunities for new contributors to come join our SIG and do stuff. I think we have a lot of like potential future ideas identified. And yep. in some cases, we already have GitHub issues that are marked with, you know, good first time issue. Um, I bet we could expand that a little bit just by going through the charter uh, and, and blog about that, sort of introducing this big its scope and just a general call for contribution that is a pretty good idea I mean we could definitely announce you know kind of seek up sort of it and explain a little bit what we do um, there as well yeah there was a blog that went up from um, I think the TOC a little while ago uh, a couple of weeks ago that uh, caught me a little bit by surprise so I didn't actually get a chance to respond before they printed it but that was sort of from the outside in, perhaps now it's time to, to do a blog from us to the broader community. I can check with CNCF if that's content which they would like to see. And if it's content which they would like to see, I can just start a doc and throw it in the channel. But I like the idea. It's a good, it's a good idea. Because uh, the, the, the inherent problem we have is most people who are here are here because they already actively watch what is happening within CNCF, whereas the blog might be a, ch a, a chance to, to get coverage um, on the outside of CNCF as well. I suspect especially end users and such, um, like most of them, not all of them, as we see in this call, but um, most of the end users will not actively consume anything um, which which um, which is happening within CNCF in in the absolute inner workings. So we can spread this more. Is anyone interested in spearheading this? Or yeah, can. I, I I will if nobody else wants to. But I'd, I'd rather contribute than than drive it personally, just so we can fan out. If no one else is, is volunteering, I, I can do it. I, I, I'm starting to get used to hammering out blog posts anyway. So. <laughs> I would be overall interested. This is Amir. Um, I would be interested in uh, contributing to the blog post, I guess, you know, as a writer, maybe uh, in the beginning. Cool. So do we want to start it as a Google Doc and just collaborate that way? Or? Yep, as per usual. Yep, yep. sounds good to me. Just a moment ago, I just set the action point. Uh, before that, I actually need to reach out to see and see if, if they want to see this. more than welcome to, to also chip in on writing the uh, meeting notes, um, which mentally unboxed me for. for um, so the next uh, point of order mm -hmm. next, uh, top, uh, topic is um, recommendations for uh, OLED system. And there are tons and tons of, of suggestions within, within that document. We actually have two documents now, just a moment. Here are the use cases. Um, 
Should we just start walking through the use cases to see what people like, what they dislike, and then just start accepting stuff? I will take that as a yes. So I lost my, okay. You can all see my screen, I guess. I probably need to resize to to match a more normal screen layout. Okay. Can I assume everyone has read this or should we walk through it slowly? I think there were literally last last minute changes by Ivan or or, or people literally, you know, two hours ago. Okay, so I'll just give everyone some time to read what's on the screen. I'll also resize some more. That's the problem with ultra whites. I don't have a concept of what other people's screen look like anymore. No, oh, I'm in this with the wrong with the wrong account. Um, Bartik, Matt, if you can add my work email, um, or else I can close this window and. Yeah, yeah, let me let me do that. Sorry, what? I just realized I can't. I can't. Yeah, I'm doing this. No worry. Recommendations should be now. Oh, just I sorry. see. Now. Yep, thank you. I, su I suppose it's a little off topic, but do we have like the ability with CNCF to have a shared Google Drive just for our SIG so that we don't have this like... Okay. Um, I can ask with my Prometheus hat on, this was a rather long process, but we needed, like with Prometheus, we needed probably different stuff. Yeah, let me take this as an action point. I, I can actually take this one. Uh, I've been a little bit between vacation and other things, a little bit not, not here as much as I'd like to be. I can, I can chase it down with Cheryl. And okay. yeah, we, we have a service desk request I can make to, I think. Yeah, you probably want EHOR, um, but yeah, um, either works. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay, cool. Right for the off topic. Okay, so um, the first edition is this one. Um, my own opinion, um, it's valid. The only thing is, should we should we define strongly? I think it's somewhat obvious in as much as, as you want to ha carry the same metadata between the different things. Um, and, and being someone who has argued for years that something like Loki needs to exist, I, I, I know where this is coming from. Like you need to say to have the same metadata on on all the things to to make to to make jumping between the different systems, metrics, logs, traces easier. Um, so I would tend to just accept as is, or do we need to do we need to put verbiage of what strongly means? Maybe I can explain a bit more. Um, what I would like to see is, and the problem we're facing right now is there is no way for us to relate all this thing together. Like you mentioned, there is no metadata for it. Loki didn't exist until very recently. And we can't offer users even a single way to look at metrics, logs, traces, uh, error reporting in a consistent way. Like there is no single dashboard for all of those things. So it goes further than just anomaly detection. Like having all this data together and accessible through a single view, for instance, would be a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I'm obviously biased working where, where I work, but yes, <laughs> I agree with everything you said. <laughs> so I think this one too late to, to, I think for companies that, you know, take take more of a like we i don't know a lot of people on this call are just super jazzed about the topic but at the end of the day like time to 
time to remediate an issue, time to diagnose an issue, MTTR, MTTD, all that stuff. Um, that's like real money, right? So I think I think this this one in particular, this this correlation and just the the time it takes to do this manually without something like this is is one of the bigger costs that is you know makes it an opportunity and then something worthwhile chasing. I know we're not prioritizing, but if we were, this is the one that I at least I see come up a lot. Yeah, no, it's a valid point. Um, like that's 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 implicit in, in I think everything we said. But yes, it's it's probably good to to make this explicit. So I would just accept this. I, I made this addition, but I don't think that's contentious. Three, two, one. Good. <clears throat> so data governance. Um, specific use cases. I think it's not really part of analysis. On the other hand, it is a valid point which will probably play into the end results. So I would tend to, to, to keep this in. The question is, it's not location specific. So maybe we can maybe we can find a better place for it. But the uh, the statements in and as of themselves, I think, are valid. Is Ivan on the call? I looked through the attendees, and I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like more like uh, requirements. In the same way, hey, systems should have this latency. That's kind of the same. Should be secure. Uh, but definitely mm -hmm. worth to rem remembering that. Yeah. Not, not, not fully. Um, There's I a multi-tenancy sort of kind of issue also, right? Yes. Right. And the one thing which is missing, I need to... No, it's absolutely multi-tenancy, uh, which, is, which is a very valid point. And for example, deliberately ignored within Prometheus, but um, it, it's, it's a problem which people have. In our case, it's a problem we have with Loki in the first place. So we use Elastic to cover that, and it kind of sucks to not be able to switch over, for instance, just because yeah. multi tenancy is, is kind of harder. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Like, um, multi tenancy is one of the hardest things to, to put into a software if, if it's not there day one. Of course, it basically flips, it flips. Um, everything within the data storage, which is usually one of the most painful things to, to, to touch. Okay, so I think we can accept this as valid use cases, but we need to find a different place for this. At least this one. So let's talk about... Just to be clear, is our goal here just to quickly confirm that these are all valid use cases but you know for stall discussion of either priority or extrapolation on the use case or do we want to kind of go deep in this time today um, no the intention as per last week was to just collect use cases get quick consensus on all the use cases are they valid are they not valid and we we have quite some of them to then in the next iteration without needing to be interactive and in real time um, basically comment on, on, on what that is. And that means obviously priority, prioritization, <laughs> uh, hard work, and, okay. and, and going to, um, to actually how can those use cases be solved. Awesome, like, thanks. Um, so basically anything here we just have, is this valid? Do we agree? Do we need to be more specific, less specific, cover, cover other things like, for example, the MTDR comment or the multi tenancy comment? This is exactly the kind of, of honing the statements which, which we're looking for and then just accept it and work based on this. What does this actually mean? Like, for example, to have a specific, to have a specific um, example within um, Within Prometheus, uh, multi-tenancy is deliberately ignored, but then it makes sense for, with my Prometheus hat on, 
um, to get a challenge from CNCF or the wider uh, community or whatever, what are you doing about multi-tenancy? And with my Prometheus hat on, the answer is we deliberately ignore this for very good reasons. But then at least we, we make this more explicit. And I know with my Prometheus hat on, we have this in our documentation as to why we do this, blah, 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 blah. But then it becomes a, a, a checkbox and either we tick it or we say, well, we don't tick it for a reason X, which with my sick hair on, uh, sick hat on is I think absolutely valid that, that projects deliberately ignore use cases, but then we can say, okay, this project doesn't follow that use case. Unless it's super high priority and then maybe it becomes a hard requirement but then the SIGs cannot directly impose any requirements onto member projects. That was made very clear during, during the SIG creation process. Of course, that was actually discussed. Okay, so it should be possible to extract a subset of data for specific use cases while keeping others uh, protected. I don't know what to make of that statement. Um, it, it seems to be a copy of this statement. So for this statement as currently marked, I would tend to, to delete it. Or am I missing something? Yeah, I think that's essentially multi-tenancy, yeah. Yes, or to phrase it differently, extracting is just a specific case of accessing, so we can just kill it. Correct. Okay. Cool. And this is what I just put in, because this is also something which will start to bite more and more data sovereignty laws, like this data must not leave a certain jurisdiction, Singapore, China, uh, European Union come to mind. Um, this might be solved with just deploying in a different zone or something, but we should at least think about this going forward. So yeah, I would I would tend towards accepting those two then. Comments? Yes, no. I suspect if I, I wasn't sure about this, but I was assuming that this also meant things like EPHI or PII. PII is a very valid point. So or, let's or help information like EPHI as well. Just to just to. Can we accept those? And then we should jump directly to PII. Anyone against accepting those? Three to one? Good. Um, yes, PII is absolutely, I need to filter out PII. In. Yeah, and then the last kind of bucket of data sovereignty also, at least in the US is the CCPA the consumer protection um, stuff that went into effect where a consumer can say, you know, thou shalt delete all of my stuff. And this is a problem for many log aggregation and or. So that, that's another scenario that I see, like all of these bucketed under this data sovereignty or data governance compliance. Yeah. I mean, those two uh, point, or at least this here, um, points towards uh, needing needing mechanisms for rewriting uh, the storage and such. Where, for example, Thanos uh, has a really nice storage, whereas Prometheus and Cortex not not yet so much. Um, yeah. I mean, Cortex is getting there. Prometheus will we'll see. Well, you can. Yeah, it, it goes too far. But yeah, I, I think those are valid use cases. Um, I realized I added it, I didn't, I didn't make suggestions, but should we, add the, uh, should we add those? Anyone against it? Are these valid use cases? Very good. Let's just make this a heading one so we don't forget this. Oh. Funny, I thought people would have would have um, thoughts around this, but it's probably self-explanatory what, what I meant with this one. Hmm. 
Okay, Rob, are you on the call? I can't see the participant list. Ah, oh, here you can see it. No, he's not. So I think this one is a valid use case, but it's not really an atomic use case because it's basically just a vehicle for saying, I need to access lots of data, which is kind of the point what, what this whole analysis push is, is about, or am I missing something? I mean, this is doable right now with basic Prometheus queries, but if, if I assume and if I infer that they really mean on large sets of historical data, like, you know, over the last year or two years, like that, that gets to be more at least into this OLAP or analytics use case versus just a straight forward, you know, computer rate using metrics. Yeah, it looks like long term storage essentially with the same kind of aggregate, well, the same details across years and months, yeah. So this is all basically stats over queries over like years in a nutshell. If you want to sum up in five words. It, it seems like, I just don't want to delete it without Rob uh, getting back to us. I mean, coming from, initially coming from, from um, mainframe world, um, this concept this concept of interactive queries versus batch queries, where batch queries mm -hmm. can just run in the background and I don't care when the result comes back, I just care that it comes back, is probably something which, um, which also plays into here. The one thing that may be different here is that you might be aggregating over dimensions other than theories ideal, like PromQL, you can only aggregate over series ID, which matters for aggregates like median, uh, where uh, re-aggregating uh, makes a big difference. So one of the things that I think is, is getting at here is aggregating over different dimensions than just series ID. That's a really good point. Yeah. I didn't get the point, sorry. He's saying that one of the one of the harder things to do, if I understand, is to aggregate over over things that are not series. So there are some aggregations that involve revisiting all of the data or uh, reformulating it or Ah, uh, okay. Do you know, like, so, yeah. so outside of just the PromQL box where you can aggregate on, on series using that, if you already either have other attributes that you want to aggregate on. Or sub attributes of the series. For example, getting a median grouped by the namespace is different than getting the median grouped by the entire series and then grouped by the namespace. Yeah, but you can do that all you can do all of that with PromQL, no? Because you have different labels, different dimensions uh, uh, as part of the metric. As far as I understand from PromQL semantics, your initial aggregate would will always be on the series and then you could re-aggregate. But again, for some aggregates, that doesn't give the same result as um aggregating initially just on namespace. Yeah, so you can definitely do aggr multiple aggregation layers and you can do that even across different, uh, um, let's say, periods of time if you have aggregations over time as well. And uh, this is like kind of recently like a year ago thanks of sub queries. So you can build totally kind of complex queries um, and you can totally mix the whatever you want to median group and then uh, have different aggregation grouping across uh, different labels uh, that are resulting from the initial grouping or things like that, unless I'm missing. Uh, I think there is no limitation for that from PromQL. Uh, sorry, uh, what I mean is you can, in PromQL, you can get the median by series ID 
and then you could uh, get the median uh, uh, by namespace. Uh, but that, uh, getting the median by series ID and then the median by namespace is different than getting the median by namespace to begin with, and that you cannot do with PromQL. Uh, there's always an underlying lower level of aggregating by series. May, may, maybe this isn't important, but for some types of analysis, it actually ends up being important. Nice. Sounds like it would be awesome if you can provide some example like offline, uh, even here. Um, and then we can, we can look at yeah. that. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like say you're using, say you're using like time scale or something like that. So it's Postgres underneath and your remote writing metrics to it. Right. You might, yeah, this is a good point. I, I'm happy to accept it and move on and just to take an action to, to write this up in more in detail. If, if you want to do that directly, you, you, you seem to have the best handle on it. Um, so yeah, kind of... I want to, so to invoke to suggest this, um, to, to basically also just like, I, I'm obviously always torn with, with 20 different heads. Um, about how much to to interject when we when we diverge in interesting discussions from the actual topic at hand, which is always super hard to juggle, and and any feedback as to how much how much leeway versus uh, lip cracking um, people want uh, is highly appreciated because I don't know how exactly people want to want to have it. Um, yeah. This one I think is a valid use case capacity planning, and we can just accept as is. Um, of course, uh, capacity. Can, is you can generalize it a bit to uh, trend analysis or um, predicting uh, time series, mm -hmm. because it, it's not only about capacity planning. Any form of metric you'd like to predict what it's going to look like in, for instance, a year or in a month. It doesn't have to be just how much can I did I, do I need to scale my cluster in in a year. Yep. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with the sentiment expressed. Um, absolutely. Um, and that's precisely what, what this talk is about. Um, for, for the use case, I think this is already a valid use case. I mean, we can start deleting words like, for example, it doesn't matter if it's a Kubernetes cluster. It's just whatever work environment you have. On the other hand, having examples is, is not bad either. Yeah, the reason I'm saying that is I think below there is another comment from Ivan or suggestion from Ivan about pretty much the same thing. Uh, you want to do prediction of what you need to do later on. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. You mean this one? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I had written a similar one too. There's a promcom. Prom con talk from Munich last year. Um, they get no, you know, early, yeah, from GitLab about this topic. Yep. Um, yes, it's uh, that's. Uh, okay, yeah, we can already start condensing this down. This makes sense. But also, when we when we come when we come to here, we can just start removing stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. It can be even wider. I think this is suitably generic. I think I can only accept the whole thing as one, and then we just start deleting things out again. Let's mark this gray for now. I had to accept it, but I'll just mark it as such as something which is under discussion. Yeah, we'll have to dedupe later and call us multiple passes. Okay. 
this one as marked probably maybe we can rephrase it like this I think this covers covers the intention and also goes with with ah oh shit the comment is gone because oh, I accepted stuff okay and I would actually say that we can move this one to here everyone agree. I need to learn to ask if anyone disagrees. So anyone disagree? <laughs> Three to one? Okay. okay. Also looking at the time, we maybe have like five minutes more and then we need to flip over to the next topic or we decide uh, as a group to stay with this document. Okay. So all of these are valid, but they are not actual use cases. So maybe we can put this into a consideration section or an example section. So if we put this, if we phrase it like this, is everyone okay with this? Anyone disagree that we, like, this, or maybe for context, this is this is one of the tricks from from ITF where you have the actual intention of the document and cover this in this case use cases. But then you just have a consideration section, which basically allows you to put non-core stuff into the same document while clearly keeping this distinction between what you actually want to talk about versus what is good to keep in mind. Um, so I would tend towards doing it similarly here, where we can where we can have a a thing at the end to put considerations and examples. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I like it. Anyone disagree? Very good. How can I? Okay, let's just. Okay, let's just accept this and let's accept this and let's accept this. This. Okay, I'll just accept everything and we just walk through it because else I can't put stuff at the end. Okay. Uh, did anyone see if I closed any comments? I think I only accepted edit, but I hope I didn't close any comments. No, I didn't close anything. Okay, Thank you. Okay, this one we can kill because we we had that earlier. So how can we phrase this as a use case? I think it's valid, but um, isn't that anomaly detection again? It kind of is, um, which is like, I think honestly, anomaly detection is largely out of scope for this effort for the simple reason that if your data set is large enough, you will always have correlations. Um, 
So you would need actually actually uh, domain specific things which which can look at stuff and optimize, and those things are usually human. Of course, machines depend on on pre tagged data. Even in in cutting edge machine learning, you still need humans to to tag data. So um, all of this is a complicated complicated way of saying if you do just pattern detection and and anomaly detection, you will always find the wrong stuff. Well, yes. Yeah, so just going to, to yeah. use root cause analysis in the chat. So, to to flip this into into a use case, which involves the human. Well, true, but you know there might be systems that allows um, easy. Uh, definition of how anomaly detection should be run and you know if you can at least create some integration that will pull this data from where you want and this will be defined by humans this is already part of the system to to make that uh, to allow that right to define the api that would satisfy this need so this is still kind of valid use case to me I, I'm not saying it's not valid. I'm just saying we need to flip this. And for the generic machine learning use case, I'm not convinced this will this will work anytime soon. But yeah. So how can we flip this into a use case? Um, Is this something which covers all intended meanings of, of what we talked about? Yeah. I think it covers it because if you look at the second bullet points below, there is something like, for instance, symptoms versus versions of software. And you could have a human saying, well, for this version, we expect this. For this new version, we expect that. And suddenly, we don't have this normal state anymore. That's kind of practically what you what you wrote in the end. Okay, okay but this would be covered by 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 this I mean You mean like this? That, that's what the second bullet point hints at, at least. Yes. 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 I mean, yeah. Yes. But yeah. Sorry. Let me restart the sentence. My point is, uh, I'm trying to reduce text as much as possible, as per usual. Of course, uh, writing more text is easier than than writing less text. So I want to really condense into into uh, into atomic use cases, and then we can start exploding from there again. So the question I think, which I was trying to ask, is: Is this covering everything in here, or did I miss anything? Because this one and this one, like these two, are to me basically the same thing, just phrased differently. And by extension. These examples fit here. At least that was my thinking, but I might be wrong. So, if I look at the next one, there is also a question of integration with things that are not observability related. For instance, there is a mention of ETCD, but you can imagine that it could be anything that's not Prometheus, Jaeger, uh, Loki, and so on. Yeah, this one would be going into this section. Um, I think first um, that's yeah. that's more this system or this this type Indeed. of problem. Okay, so to close this mentally, this one I can I can delete everything because it's covered by the sentence above. Correct? Does anyone disagree? 
And you're more than welcome to disagree. I actively encourage you to disagree because, again, I might just be wrong. Okay. I, I think it's not only detecting anomalies, it's also correlating the causes for those anomalies. Uh, like, the problem is just not to detect the anomaly, it's also to say, I've detected X anomalies and they are all on this specific software version, which I don't think the, the sentence covers. Maybe you just detect anomalies and their causes in an automated fashion. I'm not convinced you can detect the cause. Maybe symptoms rather than causes. Yeah, correlation and causation are like. But then we can just then we can just uh, replace anomalies with symptoms, because basically anomalies is is. So I, I'm not convinced we can actually detect the root cause automatically, because this this presumes encoding everything into 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 the system and i don't think we as a field are are at that point we we can so it, is can this... i make an unrelated uh, remark though because on the agenda there is still 11 minutes of topics oh, yeah. and yeah, there is four left right. thank you very much very very much let me check. Um, guidelines for new metrics and list of projects uh, landscape document. Okay, so should we should we leave off here and actually try to to condense this down into 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 use cases? Because these are more like these are literally bullet points, not atomic use cases. So let's do it like this. Anything below the axis is not, or in between the axis has not been. That's cool. That's our grooming line. And once again, thank you for calling out the time. I, I didn't catch who it was, but thank you very much. Sure. So next one. Yeah, so Arthur, are you are you with us? Um, if not, I can kind of introduce this topic. Arthur? Uh, yes, I am, but uh, I would prefer if you could. Arthur, perfect, perfect. I can <laughs> so um, essentially, looks like you are looking for um, kind of information regarding the observability. And this is actually the topic that, well, we should be responsible for. Um, and we have like CNCF project flags, which are looking into increasing, improving observability overall. And you had a couple of questions and those questions are um, like totally valid. And, and I think we are missing some, um, I don't know, good guides and maybe tutorials um, that would be giving you this answer immediately. I, I kind of, I think I answered everything. You can, you can kind of check like below. However, what I would try to kind of talk about during this meeting is um, how we can make sure you, you would be answered without our help by we, but with, I don't know, some content that we provide, right? So my question would be for you, Arthur, what were the sources that you were trying to read before this question? Did you um, try to reach, uh, I don't know, um, did you look on any videos or any, any because you had some knowledge before that, I could see. Yeah, uh, I have some pre uh, previous knowledge because I've been working with Prometheus for quite some time, but this is the first time I'm implementing uh, new metrics. Uh, I've tried uh, looking for uh, any guides on Google, uh, CNCF, uh, repositories, but really I couldn't find anything. Uh, Can I ask a, a question, maybe? Um, 
because this is specifically talking about metrics, but isn't the, the issue also broader than that in the sense that observability guidelines yeah. are not really there? How do you implement tracing or logging for a service, for instance, in a way that's totally. actually useful? I totally agree because Flux problems is not only with metrics, it's over, observability, uh, uh, everything related to it, uh, tracing, events, uh, logging, everything you just said. Exactly, and I think you just started with metrics as a first thing, but uh, the plan is to go forward, right? With Flux. Yes. Anyway, from in my opinion, like we already have topic uh, around working group for uh, blog posts or videos or even white paper. So those questions are, are definitely giving some kind of direction that we should follow. And um, I don't know, do you have any, to the, to the kind of CNCF SIG team, uh, do you have any suggestions how we could take it and make it actionable, something from it? Uh... The first thing that come to my mind, uh, on the beginning of this meeting, someone said about uh, CNCF blog, official blog. Could be this a, a good place to start with. Yeah, that makes sense from my side. However, this is very like one off thing that we could write and it will be just, you know, forgotten after some time. So generally it would be nice to have some kind of, um, yeah, wiki or some kind of space that someone can, um, yeah, some kind of index of knowledge, right? This is what um, Seek Observability could try to maintain, I would say, to have like um, a starting page for for those kind of observability features um, for, for like CNCF application, right? And then, you know, for metrics, you go there, for logs, you go there, and like, I would say something more discoverable than blog posts, but the blog post is better than nothing. Yes. There are a few places of documentation in official projects. If you look at Prometheus, there is like best practices into how to create uh, observability and metrics into your to your service, but it's it's not enough, or it's very um, specific to metrics, and that's not the only bits that you want to show. But that's a good point because um, you're right that each project has its own um, documentation exactly. that, is, that is growing. So it would be nice if this feedback, you know, we can be an entry point as a sake observability and then we can forward this feedback to the project and improve their kind of documentation. However, we should be kind of a starting point, which means we should first even um, forward those people to those projects documentation. But that's, yeah, that's a very good point. Because like your questions, uh, like they, the answer for those should definitely be part of the Prometheus doc, right? Most of the time when we have questions around this, uh, where I'm working, we always refer to the Prometheus documentation when considering metrics, because a lot of those questions are actually answered already. It's just, yeah. they suffer either from a discoverability problem or the people just don't immediately think about, okay, how can I like figure this out on my own? I think within the six space, um, having, and I think Bartik was looking for BCPs, best current practices as, as this knowledge base of what is currently the thing to do or the suggested thing. I, I'm not sure if it makes sense for, for Prometheus and others to basically refer back to a shared documentation that has its pros and cons. There is um, also, and I know that I'm the one selling on that one, uh, Open Metrics is finally making actual good progress. Uh, and we have tons of considerations in there as well about how to, how to do this. And those are already synced, for example, between Open Metrics and Open Telemetry, at least to some extent, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I think having this is good, um, but there is already ample um, pre-existing knowledge which should, which should probably be reused. And then we can just take the same thing, make it as a blog post, make it as a BCP, and basically use the same thing twice and get twice the coverage. What I do miss is some sort of a white paper describing what would be best to implement. Like people are talking about golden signals or how you should have service level indicators. 
but it's very hard for newcomers to say this is interesting and you should expose it. Yeah. Okay, so looking at the time, um, what are the next steps here? Yeah. Should it be uh, based on, on what we have within other projects, IG, uh, e.g. Prometheus, so we can, so we can get this into a publishable form or what, what are the next steps here? Well, I would say entry point would be would be next step. I think Arthur got. Uh, we can help Arthur like in the meantime in this issue, but um, entry point with maybe what what Arthur asked about is a good starting point port for entry point. So entry point would be some index page, whatever, in our repo. Maybe it's a good idea. Okay. So something that, that Michael is adding right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to start that. Yeah, feel free to decline or edit or approve whatever. This is just uh, free notes. Perfect. I think this is what we want. Is that is that right? Are we agree with entry point for like index to other um, projects, documentations that are kind of official? Um, it also ties nicely with the next point on the agenda, which is uh, the landscape list of projects thing. Yeah, I agree. Cool. I think this is a good next step and we have like four minutes for a list of projects. Uh, Actually, we have 55 minute meetings, but yes, let's take those unless some, someone needs to, <laughs> to run. Um, let me pull up the next one. So I think Bartek, you want to take this one, correct? I can stop screen sharing, I guess. Bartek, yes, no? Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I didn't put that on agenda. <laughs> I was muted. Oh, I, I thought didn't... you put it there, sorry. No, uh, put it there. however, I can talk about that. Uh, I can at least give a context about the issue I created initially about the list of projects. I thought we can add um, a nice um, kind of overview of the... Um, kind of into the light landscape, which is kind of interactive, this landscape map, if we can have some kind of filter uh, based on the SIG um, relation. And uh, looks like Dan kind of pointed me that there is observability and analysis kind of topic. So you can filter by that. And I kind of I think we we changed our repo even to, to, to give this link um, and it might be good enough. That was the latest kind of news on this topic. So there is TLDR, there's nothing for SIG uh, relation, but there is like topic that is kind of related to us uh, like one-to-one. -one. And yeah, I can, I can give the, the, the link as well. So, Whoever put that topic on the agenda, um, question is, is that fulfilling it or yeah, what are the next steps? You mean, uh, you mean adding this to all the other things in the landscape? Sorry? You mean, you mean adding this information to all uh, to all the things? Um, you can just PR it. Um, I think I added, but if not, I will add. Yes, correct. Um, the the other question is, is this really what we want, and is there anything missing? Because 
some of them are incubation, some of them, yeah, I think this is kind of sh uh, highlighted uh, and you can filter by that. So the question is, is it up to date? <laughs> I'm missing something in it where basically it says monitoring, logging, tracing, and then chaos engineering. But maybe monitoring is a big category right now. As in, you can split that further into metrics, tracing, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, there are things that are a mix of those as well. So it's not exactly black and white either on the, on those categories either. As I'm thinking about a vector, for instance, which can do metrics and logging at the same time. Correct. And open telemetry is tracing, even though it's also other stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a valid point for the feedback for this landscape, I guess. Uh, however, we can totally use that. Um, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I will add PR if it's not there. I mentioned this. And um, sorry, what's your name again? Um, Michael. Michael, can you just put an issue, uh, like comment on an issue maybe? Um, about this feedback or even start an issue on the landscape. If you can do that, that would be so awesome because this is uh, yep. literally an issue on this landscape that, you know, this is not entirely true. What if the projects have share, shared uh, topic, let's say? Yeah, oh, I'll open an issue on landscape. Awesome. Go on. Okay, we're over time anyway, and we're through. Sorry for not catching for not catching um, work, the working doc early enough. And thanks again for for catching me um, to to pivot to other stuff. Okay, um, I highly encourage any everyone to to keep working on the on the OLED document so we can uh, just rubber stamp it the next time. Ideally. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.